Hi, welcome to the Me and My Bass series. In this series, I will bore you with some interesting facts about some of the basses or bass related, audio related stuff I own. I will tell you how it pushes them and why further I will tell you my humble opinion about their playability and their sound. This time's up, the Kemper Profiler 2016 part five. five. This will be the last episode about what you can do uh, with this camper. I will show you what can be adjusted once you stumbled on a profile you like, but you like to tweak it. Uh, I will stop with doing the effects. There are so much more effects than we already did, but that's more in the realm of pitch shifting, delays and reverb. Interesting stuff. But I'm focusing on a very dull bass player, that's me, uh, who has one amp, one setting, and maybe a couple of pedals. So uh, let's get on with the profile tweaking and see what exactly is available. So I got here a good sounding profile of a Blue Line Ampeg bass amp, but I like to tweak the knobs a little bit. So here we go. When you press the amp button, you can see a couple of things which can be adjusted, like definition. The definition parameter controls the correct characteristic fingerprint of the preamp. The profiling process automatically sets definition to a value that represents the reference amp. You could, for example, use it to modernize a profile of a vintage amp without having to use additional stomps. Alternatively, Start with uh, a profile of a modern tube amp and use definition to give it more a vintage sound when driven into distortion. You can also use definition to align the sound of your guitar to the sound of your amp if required. Don't uh, be afraid to keep experimenting until you get the balance that sounds the best to you. Okay, let's tweak that dial and hear what it what is changing in the profile. Then comes power shaking. Power shaking models the interaction between the guitar signal and the distortion stage. Increase the amount of power shaking to emphasize the velocity and energy of crunch sounds. The guitar sound gains additional energy and presence without raising the uh, perceived volume of the distorted signal. Uh, when you turn power shaking beyond 50%, you go beyond what can be achieved with an analog tube amp, but without losing any of the natural characteristics of the sound. At full force, power shaking can make sparkling clear notes sound louder than distorted ones, so you can use it to expand the dynamic range of the original sound. With power shaking set to 0% the original dynamic range of the profile is maintained. Let's tweak the dial. Next is pick. The pick parameter allows you to control the level and sharpness of the pick attack independently from the sustained portion of the sound. The result is also independent from the amount of distortion. You can use this parameter to make clean sounds even more percussive without having to use a compressor. Without with fully distorted sounds, you can revive the attack phase of any notes that get drowned in the natural compression caused by distortion. If you set pick to a negative value, it will soften the attack, resulting in a more fluid sound. Let's tweak some more.
Next up is the compressor. This compressor parameter is different from the stomp compressors because it's a part of the simulated amp circuit. In other words, it allows for a completely different sound compared to compressors that are inserted before, pre or after post the amp module. Distorted signals are not affected by compression, so only clean signals will be boosted. The dynamics of your playing are fully retained, allowing you to go from a crunchy sound to a compressed clean sound, purely by the strength of your picking. The volume knob on your guitar works exactly as you would expect. For instance, reducing the volume of your guitar will transform a dynamic crunch into a clean compressed sound with full energy. Yep, we're gonna tweak. Next up is Clarity. Clarity changes the sound of the distortion in a new and unique way. Turning the Clarity soft knob to the right will bring the clean character of the sound into focus without lowering the amount of distortion. The distortion itself will become less forward in the mid frequencies and sound far more transparent. Tweaking. Then comes the tube shape and tube bias. Tube shape controls the distortion characteristics of the tubes, ranging from very soft to very hard. All kinds of crunch sounds can be dialed up from warm blues to singing metallic to harsh. Uh, depending on the gain setting or the playing style, the resulting effect can be rather subtle completely distorted sounds are mostly unaffected by this parameter, as are the clean sounds. Set the value to 3 to simulate a typical sound of a preamp with tubes. To achieve power amp tube characteristics, try setting tube shape to around 9. Power amp tubes produce a much harder distortion because the negative feedback in the power amp circuit line, line, line rises the tube <laughs> amplification making the distortion curve edgier. Tube bias influences the overtone structure of the distortion. While the effect on the character of the sound is fairly subtle, you should feel a quite a difference in distortion dynamics. As you increase the amount of tube bias, the guitar will go into distortion much earlier in the dynamic range and yet still retain a lot of dynamic headroom. At maximum value, the distortion characteristics mimics those of a tube screamer. Uh, tweak. Uh, and last, there is direct mix. Well, with direct mix, you can open up a parallel path to the amplifier distortion and mix a clean portion of the guitar to the distorted sound. This will add some dynamics and attack to the sound as well as adding some of the frequency content of the clean guitar or bass of course. Similar results were formally achieved by running the guitar through a clean and distorted amplifier in parallel dual amping. Now it can be done with a twist of a knob. Direct mix controls the volume of the clean portion and of course volume of the profile. Tweak. So that was the possibility to change the sound of the profile and after being profiled. Let's face it, if it sounds alright, you can fuck it up, but 
changing some of these settings. So uh, then we hit the EQ. Well, that explains itself. Of course, it's possible to set the EQ pre or post the profile. There are four controls, bass, middle, treble, and present. If that's not enough, you can dial in an EQ effect in one of the slots and continuing tweaking. Okay, last is uh, the cabinet. The cabinet button brings the cabinet module into focus. You can freely combine guitar cabinets and guitar amps from different profiles to create new stacks. The cabinet has three parameters to tweak its character in an artificial way, high shift, low shift. And both parameters influence the characters, characteristic performance of a cabinet profile, thereby simulating change in size, high shift, will make the higher formats more prominent, whereas low shift does the same for the lower frequencies. Character use this parameter to change the overall character of the cap. Turning the soft knob to the right of the center will enlarge the peak and notches in the frequency response curve. This will emphasize the character of the cabinet and may the sound too penetrating at extreme values. Turning it to the left of the center will smooth the differences between the peaks and notches in the frequency response curve and flatten the character of the cabinet. Towards the leftmost position, the sound will resemble that of a analog cabinet simulation, which often have a very simple frequency response and a little character. Pure cabinet will gently polish the sound of the virtual mic guitar uh, cabinet to bring it closer to the sound of the direct guitar cabinet. The fundamental uh, character of the sound will still be maintained. While changing up cabinets um, can make a huge audible difference, uh, these last parameters can also make some interesting sound adjustments. Let's tweak this 8x10 cabinet and listen what it does. Now I like to check out a couple of different cabinets and what it does after the already mentioned uh, cleanish profile of a blue line impact bass amp.
I used my Spectre Rebob for this clip and the signal flow in this clip and the signal in <laughs> signal flow in this clip was my bass direct into the camper, then into the Behringer ADA preamp, uh, out through the ADAT output into the imp uh, the ADAT input from the UAD Apollo Twin without any processing. I hope you uh, like this episode. If you do, please uh, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.